Ahmad Mansour. He is a professor of anesthesia in our department. He is one of the eminent ultrasound users in our department. Uh, so uh, he's going to talk about uh, chest wall blocks. Dr. Muhammad. Uh, good evening. Uh, I'd like to thank all uh, MEGA team for this uh, excellent uh, uh, organization for uh, uh, this meeting. Also, I'd like to thank Dr. Abraouf for inviting me for uh, to share with you uh, my lecture. Uh, also, uh, my uh, great uh, thanks to Dr. Maher Fauzi, Dr. Muhammad Abdul Latif, uh, Dr. Walid Himeni for their usual help and their supervision and uh, uh, encouraging us to share our knowledge with you. Uh, my talk today about um, uh, breast blocks, breast procedures. Uh, which block to choose. Uh, I will talk about why to consider uh, blocks, original blocks during uh, breast surgeries. Uh, what are the choices? Uh, what are the advantages and disadvantages of uh, each choice? And what's in literature about uh, these blocks and what's beyond uh, being controlled? First of all, breast surgery is an exceedingly common uh, procedure now and associated with an increased incidence of acute and chronic pain. Uh, according to the American Society of Anesthesiologists uh, practice guidelines for acute pain management in the, in the perioperative setting, acute pain is defined as pain present in a surgical patient after a procedure. Um, the World Health Organization uh, and the International Association for Study of Pain have recognized pain relief as a human right. Uh, also, poorly managed postoperative pain can lead to complications and to prolonged rehabilitation. Uncontrolled acute pain is associated with a development of chronic pain with a reduction in quality of life. So appropriate pain relief leads to shortened hospital stay and reduced hospital cost and increased uh, patient satisfaction. Also, as a result, the management of post-operative pain is an increasingly monitored uh, quality measure. Post-operative pain for surgeries involving chest wall is most managed, mostly managed using multimodal analgesia um, like uh, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs uh, like paracetamol, opioids, and local anesthetic infiltration. In extensive surgeries like radical mastectomy and the latissimus dorsi flaps, some anesthesiologists may consider the use of baravertebral block or thoracic obdural analgesia. But it is not that easy, and it is not that uh, a simple excision of, uh, of a part of uh, a tissue. Because breast surgery can be associated with a significant post-operative pain. It is very important for the breast surgery anesthesiologist uh, planning nerve block to fully understand the planned surgery, because we, have, we all know that uh, there is a lot of incisions can be involved during breast surgery from a simple incision uh, for a simple mastectomy or a lumpectomy to a major or a complicated uh, a procedure uh, like uh, modified radical mastectomy or radical mastectomy or lymph node dissection or latissimus dorsi flap. So a lot of uh, incisions can be involved uh, during the surgery. Um, uh, the incision may be from one to two centimeters long, like in, in lumpectomy, uh, to, to be uh, more than uh, 15 to 20 centimeters in, uh, in uh, radical mastectomy, and it might be more than that uh, if uh, uh, an extensive procedure will be done. The anterior breast lesion consists of a dermatoma sandwich. If the slice deep uh, into a breast with a scalpel, the blade will pass through a sandwich of layers. Just the blue for laying skin has cervical segmental uh, uh, nerve supply from roots uh, C4 and C5 uh, through the supraclavicular nerves. Further to that, you will find the skin meets uh, uh, the skin with a nerve root supply from T2 to T6 uh, through the intercostal nerves. Not, all, not only that, but the breast tissue itself has a thoracic segmental nerve supply of nerve roots from T3 to T6. And the muscles under the breast also has a different nerve supply. So the pectoral muscles uh, 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 underlying the breast have a cervical segmental supply of C5 uh, to, C, uh, to uh, T1 uh, through the pectoral nerve 
from the big uh, uh, from the plexus in the infraclavicular zone. Uh, the key fat part of the pectoral uh, major has a C5 nerve supply, and the most codat part from T1, uh, the deeper, has a C5 to T1 nerve supply, but mostly from C7 and C8. And uh, Some enthusiast, enthusiastic anesthesiologists may only use either paravertebral block or thoracic epidural block uh, as a strategy for pain relief in combination with multimodal analgesia. A sound visualization uh, for the transverse approach. As we see here, just a transverse approach, uh, ultrasound scan, we will, we'll, we'll find the, the space or the paravertebral space uh, here. Uh, the, uh, here we find the transverse process, the, uh, um, uh, in the internal intercostal membrane and the pleura. And we'll find our space between the parietal pleura and the costal. Uh, here, sorry, is uh, another uh, view for the uh, paravertebral block or the paravertebral space as a, the parasagittal approach. We'll find um, uh, the paravertebral space between the costal transverse ligament and the parietal blur. Mm -hmm. uh, Schnabel et al. did a quantitative systematic view to assess efficacy of paravertebral block in women undergoing breast surgeries. The review suggested that the quality of pain relief was excellent. With, a, with, a, with the advantage uh, of uh, less post-operative nausea and vomiting, less rescue analgesia required, uh, requirement in the first uh, 12 hours with lower uh, pain score. But despite paravertebral block was the most widely used technique uh, of regional anesthesia uh, for breast surgeries, however, uh, there is a risk of pneumothorax, inadvertent uh, entry of needle into a vertebral canal with consequent spinal cord trauma, nerve damage, and accidental pneumothorax. Also, uh, it did not provide complete analgesia to the anterior chest wall, since the innervation, as we said before, was not exclusive to the thoracic spinal nerves, but also the brachial plexus via the medial and the lateral pectoral nerves. Therefore, the Bex block came into a scenario to address these issues. The blocks technically simple, uh, and it's all uh, depending on uh, putting our local anesthesia between thoracic muscles. The pectoral nerve block type one or Bex one was introduced as an easy and reliable superficial block that targets the lateral and the medial pectoral nerves at an uh, infra. Uh, uh, infrafacial plane between the pectoralis major and the minor muscle. The terminology of PEX block, uh, uh, first uh, defined by Blanco, uh, Rafael Blanco, was, uh, uh, interest, يعني, uh, it was inter very interesting to know that this block was described first as, in, mm -hmm. as a letter to an editor in uh, 2011 uh, in the Anesthesia Journal. It was an observational study for over um, uh, the, for, for, for two years, which include approximately 50 patients. Blanco found this block very effective for breast cancer surgery and uh, for uh, subpectoral uh, processes. A local anesthesia injection between pectoralis major and minor at the third rib level to block the lateral and the medial pectoral nerve. This is the uh, Bix like Bix one block. Depending on the extent of the surgery, the regional, the regional anesthesia technique are chosen. So for Bix one block, if, if we want to do Bix one block, the, um, uh, the indication to do this block, surgeries involving Bix major muscle, like breast expanders, uh, traumatic chest injuries, porta cath insertion, or base maker insertion. Uh, for this block, for, to do this block, a high frequency linear uh, ultrasound probe is used for this block at a midclavicular level. The second and third rib uh, and fourth rib also are identified by maneuvering the probe to identify the pectoralis major and minor muscles. Then, uh, as we see here, the pectoralis major and the pectoralis minor, we put our anesthesia between in the facial plane between the pectoralis major and the pectoralis minor muscle. Here, the pectoralis major muscle, the pectoralis minor, and 
here's the space between them to put our local anesthesia, like that block uh, in the abdomen. Uh, practitioners have linked this block to the source. It is it facilitated this error uh, with the uh, spread availability of the ultrasound. After further research into sonar anatomy, a second version of PEX type one called uh, modified PEX block or PEX type two block was introduced to block the axilla and do the intercostal nerves that are necessary for several types of mastectomies. This block is a further extension of the block uh, to provide comprehensive analgesia to the entire chest wall. Uh, for in the PEX type two, uh, as uh, PEX type one block, it, it is like PEX type one block. In addition, a local anesthesia injection between pectoralis minor and serratus anterior at the third le level is done. When applying this block, the lateral branch of the uh, thoracic uh, second to the fourth spinal nerves and possibly the anterior branch will be blocked. Uh, if sufficient local anesthesia um, uh, penetrates the external intercostal muscles. By entering the axilla, the long thoracic nerve may also be blocked. So this block, lower uh, pex type two, suitable for more extensive excessions like tumor resections, mastectomy, axillary clearance, so the indication for this block is more extensive breast surgery involving the serratus anterior and axilla, like tumor section, sentinel node excision, axillary clearance, and tissue expanders. Uh, for, to do this uh, block with ultrasound also, the linear high frequency probe, the probe is moved laterally to visualize the third and fourth rep. Here, uh, we will see the third rep and fourth rep. Here we will try, we will, we will uh, start to, uh, uh, to visualize the serratus anterior muscle. The initial part of this block is similar to BIX type mm -hmm. one. Uh, the pectoralis major and the minor muscles are identified in the first part. Uh, the serratus anterior muscle can be seen below the pectoralis minor muscle. Here is the pectoralis major muscle, pectoralis minor and the serratus uh, muscle, and here is a brighter, brighter pleura. Then uh, Blanco uh, continued their sonar exploration of the chest wall and identified two potential spaces in the chest wall at the axillary level, which is the serratus block. Uh, serratus plane block, uh, the, ne the nerve uh, blocked in this block is the thoracodosor, uh, thoracic intercostal nerves. The lateral part of the thorax is blocked in, this, uh, in the serratus block. So the indication for this uh, block is the latissimus dorsi flap reconstruction. How to do it with the probe in the mid axillary line? Uh, one potential space as above the serratus anterior and the other below it. After understanding mix two block, it's easy to identify serratus anterior muscle. Uh, other muscles uh, can be ap appreciated in this view as uh, the latissimus dorsi, the teres major muscles. The injection is given in the myofascial plane between the latissimus dorsi and the serratus anterior muscle. Here is the latissimus dorsi, serratus anterior, teres major. We put our anesthesia uh, between the latissimus dorsi and serratus anterior. If he, in high, uh, there is a different uh, approaches to do the serratus block. And, but it's beyond our uh, talk today. Fee uh, uh, is superficial uh, serratus block, fee deep serratus block. Fee, uh, uh, a lot of uh, our two approaches or two main approaches with literature by uh, Yenit and there is no difference to do superficial or deep when it's all depends on the amount of local anesthesia. As, um, the mix type one, mix type two, along with the serratus anterior plane block, are blocks which, according to the routine users, provide good analgesia uh, for procedures involving the anterior and anterolateral chest wall. All the three blocks are relatively easy to perform. All anesthesiologists uh, who practice tab block will find this block quite easy to master. The block is extremely helpful in daycare procedures where thoracic epidural is not feasible. A successful uh, block will automatically avoid use of opioids, thereby the side effect of no, uh, like nausea, vomiting, respiratory depressions, and the constipations are avoided. However, an ultrasound machine with a linear array probe is a must uh, for uh, these blocks to perform. It cannot be performed with a blind or a landmark techniques, even a nervous stimulator. 
will not be useful as it is the block given in a myofascial plane. As we know, our goal uh, during our practice is to increase our success and to, uh, to decrease or to increase our safety or patient safety. Definitely, regional anesthesia techniques may improve post-operative analgesia for patients undergoing breast surgery, and it's possible to provide a high-grade uh, opioid-free uh, analgesia after all breast surgery. But what beyond pain control? And what's in literature? Patients undergoing breast surgery have a reported post-operative nausea and vomiting. Uh, for uh, the incidence of 48 to 72% with general inhalation anesthesia, uh, and uh, uh, significant, yani, high interestingly, in the uh, neutralization of total intravenous anesthesia only decreased uh, this to uh, 43.8. However, opioids are also a significant contributor to post-operative uh, uh, nausea and vomiting. Opioid reduction often results in decreased adverse reactions and the paravertebral block have been associated with 18 to 26 percent decrease in post-operative nausea and vomiting. The second thing beyond pain control is an issue called chronic persistent surgical pain or CPSP. Chronic pain after surgery or chronic post-surgical pain is a now emerging disease. It is a disease of the nervous system in the form of intractable pain after surgery or resistant pain after surgery. It is a very common disease after surgery, uh, but under, uh, it's under-recognized. About 1% of total surgeries beyond uh, to chronic persistent surgical pain. It affects a huge number of patients worldwide. So we can consider it a silent uh, epidemic disease. Because the uh, breast has, uh, as we said before, a multiple uh, level uh, nerve supply, uh, so poorly treated post-operative pain in breast cancer surgical patients has a high instance of chronic persistent surgical pain. Uh, development uh, uh, defined as pain persisting greater than six months after surgery, uh, while a recent uh, retrospective cohort analysis found that 43% uh, of patients reported uh, chronic persistent surgical pain following mastectomy, the instance of uh, chronic persistent surgical pain has been reported to be great, as great as 60%. Um, uh, the risk factor for, uh, to develop uh, chronic persistent surgical pain is the younger age, lymph node dissection, and heavier weight are also risk factors uh, to develop, uh, while immediate reconstruction and radiation are not. Unfortunately, the CBSP has been reported uh, to adversely affect quality of life and to persist for more than nine years post-operatively. Uh, as we see here in the British Journal of Anesthesia, the original anesthesia to prevent chronic pain after surgery, it uh, a Cochrane systematic review and analysis. We identified uh, 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 23 uh, randomized controlled trials, uh, uh, data uh, collected in 20, uh, 250 uh, participants, low epidural anesthesia and paravertebral block respectively may prevent uh, chronic persistent pain after uh, thoracotomy and breast cancer surgery in about one out of every four to five patients treated. And then, what about cancer recurrence, or is there an association between uh, uh, regional anesthesia or uh, treating pain and the cancer recurrence? Uh, they found that cancer recurrence rates were significantly lower in patients who had received general anesthesia with thoracic paravertebral block uh, for post-operative pain compared to those who received general anesthesia without a block, uh, uh, 94 versus versus 77% cancer-free at 36 months. Others have been excited uh, by this finding and hypothesized that regional anesthesia plant the neuroendocrine stress response to surgery and, result, and the resultant information, uh, inflammation and decrease the opioid consumption, both of which inhibit the immune system to scavenge malignant cell and reduce cancer recurrence. So 
الحقيقه to uh, to uh, to achieve these goals it's uh, it's it's time to upgrade our skills and it's time to 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 um, uh, pass our information to all anesthesiologists to start to practice uh, regional uh, blocks for breast surgery uh, to do this we have to improve our skills and uh, we have to develop new skills and this is part of our department now, and it's uh, part of our training program is to provide uh, uh, residents and uh, uh, our uh, uh, new staff with new skills like regional anesthesia techniques, and it's now part of our uh, training program. To summarize, uh, you, we have to fulfill uh, for anesthesia uh, practitioners uh, or um, who are uh, attending uh, surgical uh, theaters, they have to uh, skill um, uh, more than technique uh, for regional blocks and uh, to avoid using the, the own or to depend only on uh, uh, old school or old uh, um, anesthesia techniques because it's now uh, the time to change uh, to the future. Thank you very much. Uh, for your listening. Uh, I would like to thank Dr. Mohammed Mansour for his an excellent presentation. Uh, and we can uh, uh, open uh, the floor for questions. Thank you, Dr. Mohammed Mansour. Thank you, Dr. Mohammed Abraouf. Just I have a small comment to Dr. Mohammed Mansour. The philosophy behind the peripheral nerve block is great. And the main advantage of peripheral nerve block is to be safer than the central blocks. But if you compare paravertebral block to uh, thoracic epidural, it may be thoracic epidural more safer than paravertebral block regarding not the complications, the rate of complications of paravertebral block. Why we go to, to the paravertebral block, not the uh, epidural uh, thoracic block? Uh, thank you, Dr. Maher, for the question. The question is that the patients with, uh, with في contra indications to the thoracic epidural uh, anesthesia like uh, coagulopathy, like uh, patient refusal, like uh, patients with uh, chest problems. Also, uh, performing thoracic epidural is not that safe a procedure now uh, because there is more safe procedures. Facial plain blocks are more safe and uh, and the more easy to master. Uh, the second thing is that uh, uh, we are focus we are focusing on breast procedures and the breast is a, as we we said in our in my lecture, the breast has a different dermatoma supply and it has a different level of nerve supply from uh, brachial plexus and from the intercostal and it's it, it, we cannot achieve a cervical. Uh, a block in the brick, I mean, the whole game brick and bits, we cannot manage it or we cannot cover it with epidural or with thoracic epidural uh, anesthesia alone. Thank you, Dr. Mohammed. Uh, can I ask a question, please? Yes, please. Yes. Regarding the thoracic epidural, it has another another disadvantage. Thoracic and paravertebral both. Uh, the sympathetic block that that happens Bizarre. dynamic disturbances uh, are much more the hemodynamic, but, but, yes, the hemodynamic changes are much more serious and uh, fascial pain blocks what about the catheters in selects anterior pain block and the and the pex2 block most most of the facial plane blocks uh, nowadays uh, we can perform it with the caster if it is uh, fe uh, feasible or if it's available. The problem with the with the blocks with the catheter, the availability of the the catheters, يعني مخصصة للنوع ده من blocks مش مش موجودة كتير قوي. لكن الصح والحقيقة واللي إحنا بنعمله أو في الأماكن اللي موجود فيها الكاتيتر دي بنحط الكاتيتر والحقيقة فيها الأحسن كمان دلوقتي بيبقى العيان متوصل بالبي سي إيه كمان للكاتيتر. 
يعني العيان يقدر يتواصل ببي سي ان انجلش منصور ان انجلش بليز يس ناو ديز وي كان يوز ناو ديز وي كان يوز ا كاتيتر ان افيشال بلين بلوك اولسو وي كان كونكت تو ا بي سي اي سو اف ات از افيلبل وي كان يوز ات اند فاردر وي كان كونكت تو ا بي سي اي تو ماكسيمايز ذا بينيفيت فروم ذا بلوك You said that it's a special catheter. We cannot use the epidural catheter because there is a connector. There is a connector to connect the catheter uh, uh, to the, the epidural catheter. Muhammad, you can use it, Doctor. We can use it. We can use it. We can uh, we can use it. Yeah, if, uh, if we don't have the special catheter uh, uh, for continuous uh, blood uh, uh, infusion, we can use the regular epidural catheter. Mm -hmm. Because I, I I I use it myself. But even uh, it has been put in, in a, uh, during surgery. I mean, open. They put it in the plane and but, leave it there for 24 hours. The, the guidelines or uh, the best is to use the, as a uh, specified caster because the specified caster it has uh, in uh, in the tab uh, a nerve uh, We can connect it to a nervous stimulator, so you can uh, you can uh, do a test before injection. To see if your tip of your catheter still in plane or not. Well, is the nerve, yeah, nerve stimulator in in Cerex anterior plane block? Not, 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 not in these, not in these blocks. Not I, not in the, the use of the nervous stimulator. This block is useless. Yeah, the nervous stimulator in these blocks is is, is useless. Thank yeah. Thank so you, the there is a question one, from the floor. There's a question from the floor. Uh, from one of our colleagues, we cannot get the difference between the two types of pixel block and serratus block regarding nerve block and the procedure they are done for. For 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 uh, uh, let's make it easy for Bix one, Bix two, and Bix uh, and the serratus block. Uh, for Bix one, it is um, uh, the block to uh, it's only block the um, uh, cervical segment or the. Uh, first, so the first, uh, uh, the dermatomal segment involving the breast only. If you want to go further uh, lateral, you have to do BEX2 block. If you want to go into uh, up to the axilla and to evacuate the axilla, you can use the serratus block. What, are, what about the volume of the anesthetic that should be infused, uh, that should be injected? Uh, I use uh, around 30 to 40 ml of local anesthesia to perform uh, these blocks. And this is the routine or uh, uh, the routine practice is 30 to 40 ml of local anesthesia to do the, uh, there is a, a lot of uh, uh, combinations. We can use uh, uh, short with long acting uh, local anesthetics, but the volume is from 30 to 40 ml to achieve good block. And for the bilateral, exactly. and if you are going to do bilateral block, I, I, I'm, I'm not with, I am not with doing a bilateral block, but I can do sometimes. A, sometimes we do combination. Bilateral. Yes, but I can do a combination between uh, a vertebral paravertebral block to use a smaller amount with one of the facial plane block. Thank you, Doctor Saad. Can I add a comment on the previous Please question? Do. Please go ahead, thank you, because we are running on before time, you know. Okay. Okay. Uh, the breast receive innervation from the intercostals, from T1 to T6, from the brachial plexus through medial and lateral pectoral nerves, and from the cervical plexus through the supraclavicular nerve. So to block T1 to T3, we can do one of the following blocks, paravertebral block, erectrospiny plane block, or serratus plane block. So we can select one of these three blocks for the intercostal nerves. Concerning the medial and lateral pectoral nerves that are responsible for the axilla, you can block them through PEC1 or PEC2 or their combination. So you can select one of these two blocks for the axilla. And you have to add supraclavicular plexus block if you are looking for perfect analgesia. It just represents a small minor part. So usually we rely on three blocks to do them at the same time, something to block the intercostal, something to block the axilla by blocking medial and lateral pectoral, and something to block the supraclavicular nerve. I hope it's a clear answer for the questions 
that has been seen. Thanks. Uh, thank you so much. I would like to take the liberty to uh, to stop discussion here and.